All right, kites up, baits are out. Spring has finally sprung here, 2022 off South Florida. It is May 1st, which coincidentally is opening season for grouper. We don't actually have a grouper rod out today, but we might play around and see if we can get lucky. Uh, just focusing on pelagics. You know, it's the time of year where the big kings are gonna start coming through on the reef. Tunas, dolphin, wahoo, cobia, hence all of our spring and summertime tournaments. So welcome to the Fish Blue Water Channel. We're out here enjoying a beautiful Saturday. Let's we'll see if we can get tight on a mixed bag of pelagics. There's been uh, some nice dolphin around, some sails, some tunas. So we can get them past the sharks. Hopefully, we're gonna show you a good time today. Stay tuned. He got hit. Huh? Something was eating at him. Okay, we'll use it for dead bait. Just throw him in the well. Trigger the fish. Yeah, throw him in the well. Yeah. Here, trying to get on the board. This is a rubber band that I'm putting on. I'd like to have actually a smaller band than this to be honest with you but this is just a stopper uh, a little tip and trick here that will allow as opposed to a standard snap swivel where you can only wind it so far and then you you got to actually leader the fish into within gaffing range or leader touch if you're sail fishing and all that with this my floats I'm gonna stop right there my lead but that rubber band will slide. So we can basically, it's almost like a modified wind on where we can wind it all the way right to the boat within much closer gaff range when we're meat fishing and you still want to use a float. You got Captain Ron? Watch I these. Don't know. Still there? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, the bottom rod strikes. Let's see what it is. We are currently in 189. There is, if you actually show them the uh, screen real quick, a little bit of life coming up off the bottom there. Um, so. Comes away. I got you. Definitely not the bait, I know that much. It's a red grouper. Ah, we have ourselves a baby red grouper. I put this in the wrong one. Undersize, I believe, right? Yeah, it's gotta be 20 What's the size on those? 20. 20. He's going back. But, we're on the board. We just need to go find his, uh, Big, Big brother. brother, look at that. Now, this started out as a live goggle eye, right, Ron? Yep. And what happens is, a lot of times, these uh, all the critters on the bottom, even those live baits, they'll get in there and they'll just peck at the bait, they'll peck at the bait, until, obviously, they finally kill it. And so, who knows how long we've been sitting there with just the head, which, I mean, listen, a grouper, or snapper, We'll definitely eat that, but uh, that's probably what enticed this guy. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna basically. I just pierced his uh, air bladder. Air bladder there, so that he can swim back down um, to the bottom. All right, grow up and get bigger. Captain Ron, you're on the board. I like that uh, Randy Tao custom rod. Pretty nice. 
I got that big long gap if you want to try it, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I went over to the other side and got the short one. <laughs> Only thing you got to do is make sure you stay away from the T-top. You can go to gap with those 10-foot gaps and longer. A lot of times guys aren't paying attention. I've, I've done it myself even on video. You're coming to pull the fish in, you get buried with the gap under the top, and the quick wave fish comes right off the gap, and game over. At least it's not hung in the bottom this time. At some point, you're going to want to walk him. Can you walk him mid-ship down here, Ronnie? Yeah, if you raise that kite rod. It's a big king, big king. You want the bigger gap? All right, so what was that, the deep rod? That was the uh, no, deep flat line. That was a flat line gog. Way oh, that out was the there. flat line. That was a stinger rigged, long, flat gog. Uh, I think right in about uh, 150 foot of water. Got half a kid. Got hit. He got eaten. Got eaten? Got short. Yep. There you go. And that, my friends, is the reality of South Florida fishing. Fish in the reef. Yeah, we got As a 30 pound king. As a 30 pound king. We just had him on this side of the boat. And anymore, if you don't catch these fish fast enough, these sharks are so out of control. Look at, the, look at the bites on his belly. You can't get him to the boat. And and this is epidemic. This is up and down the up and down the coast from the Keys to North Florida. And for some reason, our fisheries management doesn't seem to think that it's an issue. But talk to any charter boat captain, talk to any recreational fisherman. This is what you're dealing with all the time. Look at that. He's got bites on his belly, bites oh, up by his head. He got hit more than once. Yeah. Yeah. As I'm reeling this up to check it, it literally got eaten in my hands. So, and it, it's, either, it's either feeling like a nice king, it's gonna be my best guess. Stays glued on. Here you go, Ron. Let me get this line out of the sea anchor. Ronnie, be ready with this lead. Here we go. Anytime you have a fish make a surge under the boat like that, you always want to... Little King, you want him? I guess we do. <laughs> King in the boat. We got a whole one in the boat. All guy. Quarter of the size of uh, Captain's Ron's. <laughs> And look at that. Foul hook. As I was reeling it in, he took a swipe at it, and uh, it's foul hooked right there on the peck fin. It's a nasty, mean fish right there. A toe biter. What's that? <laughs> a toe biter. Zaziel likes those. Little Jack. So waiting for the uh, the keeper fish on the bottom. But Ed, Ed has gotten into the game. With Mr. Ron Mitchum. <laughs> got an undersized uh, red grouper, and is this now an undersized uh, amberjack? Amberjack. Amberjack. Swallowed hook, huh? 
but the hook is down the hatch so what we're going to do is cut them right there that hook will eventually rust out no issues these guys will survive i don't know d-day or something <laughs> oh nice Oh, nice bite. Can I bring the Nick, spinners in? Nick, you don't have too much drag on it now. You want to bring the spinners no, don't, in? Don't, don't, no, 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 no. Just let it slow down. What the hell is that? You want to bring the spinners yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to go after this fish. Okay. Motor's down. I know, I know. How far down are you in the spool? Oh, to half a spool. God damn, you got a yellow fit or something on, bro. <laughs> Let's bring back some memories, Ronnie. Yeah, too damn many. Tell, 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 the, tell the camera why, about your previous yellow fin story. Oh, the one we caught out here on a blue runner on the kite? Actually, Bob plucked and caught him, but I, it was on my boat. It was December. The fish went around the boat 40 of uh, Watch your rod tip while you're talking. 45 times we finally got him got a gaff in him. He never went deep. Stayed up on the top. It was 172 pounds. Yep. Why won't you just come home? Come to your home. We just want to say hi. I mean, don't you guys want to see him? I want to see him. You know, we're trying to make this guy famous. He's not cooperating. How deep are we, Ronnie? Huh? This fish has dragged us from 220 to almost 420. Forward! I feel like he's made. I feel like he's made too many blistering runs to be to be a, a shark. Neutral! Fuck! You get that deep into the school with that much line out, so much heat on. You know, we're fishing. 20 pound test line, 40 pound leader, 40 pound titanium wire. The, the deck is stacked against you to start with on a big fish like that. I almost wish we had just been fighting them on straight mono. I would have, I would have felt a lot better about it. That's why you see more of these guys in the sailfish tournaments catch them. You know, you have less connections this setup, you know, you've got 20 to 40 and then, you know, 40 to your wire with a small barrel swivel, small crimp. Unfortunately, a fish that size, there's a lot, a lot more that can go wrong than right. Well, I'd like to be, uh, putting Ronnie and Ed through a lot of physical additional pain 
trying to figure out how we're going to get a 200, 300 pound tuna off the deck and up here on the dock, but it's still swimming alive and well and safe in the sea. Uh, nevertheless, we still got out, hadn't run the old girl for a while, got some of the, uh, the rust knocked off of her. As you saw earlier, uh, just a couple of, just a little mixed bag. Obviously, this king was the best catch of the day. Unfortunately, the sharks got the better end of it. Small king, undersized red grouper, uh, undersized amberjack, a hook of giant tuna. We would have loved to see, but uh, to be continued another, another day, another fight. All good, all fun, and um, just enjoy being out there. Captain Ron, Ed, appreciate you guys uh, as always uh, riding along. We've got some exciting spring fishing, even though this was not red hot for us today. It is, it, uh, it's, coming, it's coming quick. There was some good dolphin caught yesterday and uh, we've got our saltwater shootout tournament coming up in a couple weeks. So stay tuned guys. We've got uh, more exciting action, adventure and education coming your way for the next Fish Blue Water video.